morning everybody Kendall here I was sitting here and thinking about you know topic 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 what do I talk about today I was actually thinking about what do I write about today because it's been a good week since I actually wrote an article I'm using and I was kind of going like what is my true feeling of today what do I feel rising up around my article? That's what I'm going to talk on. So, because not all y'all like to read my 3,000 words a day. I don't know what's wrong with you. Jeez, peeps. You should read those 3,000 words. No, I try to always line things up so that it is a little bit, you know, on topic of each other. Maybe a little bit more in-depth on one. Either it is the live stream or the 3,000 words that I'm sharing. But I was thinking about it, and over, as you guys heard yesterday, dog died over the weekend, and family dog of 12 years, and then, um, and Addison, I see you on, you're going to be, you'll, you'll appreciate this, and my daughter, her boyfriend broke up with her over the weekend, and she's kind of like heartbroken, so she had a really tough week, family dog died, and uh, boyfriend broke up with her, which was just kind of sad, um, but as I was thinking about that and holding space for her, I had some other thoughts go through my head and it all comes back to vulnerability because here's the funny thing. And if we just go into the world of breakup here, since that kind of has come up in my morning already, must be having some people getting some breakups going on this week. That must be the energy that I'm stepping into that I need to be aware of because that's how things tend to roll in my world. But... I was thinking about her stuff and, and she was just, she was sharing with me, you know, that the other day they were together and he just really confessed his feelings to her and he got very open and vulnerable and sensitive and all this different stuff. And then a couple days later, gone, gone, which triggered me, funny enough, you know, getting triggered by my 16 year old daughter's little um, puppy dog love here triggered me into some some similar feelings and thoughts and occurrences of my own life and here we go into into vulnerability hangover and that is the feeling that you get afterwards and the reminders a few years back I was I was in Mexico with uh, a man that I that I still hold great love for but we are no longer together and we had this moment where we were up until probably two three o'clock in the morning and we were just sharing from the depths of our souls our feelings for each other and our fears and our hopes and our dreams and all this beautiful stuff and we were like crying in each other's arms and we were making sweet love and it was just amazing it was absolutely amazing so vulnerable so deep so connected the intimacy and the shares the truth the rawness, the realness, whew, it was a lot, it was a lot, and if I go back to that memory, back to that space, I can pull up that feeling within my body right now, and the next day, we just woke up, and we, I remember looking at him, and him and I, and, and over breakfast, we were just like, so that happened, that happened, all of that got shared, all of that depth, all of that got shared. And we just were in like this lull all day long. After that, there was this lull. And there was this strange silence, but deep connection that came from it. And it was because we had shared so much from the depths of our heart space. And in such great vulnerability that we now were just like, whoa, we're both so sensitive and realizing so much of where we're at in our relationship and in our love that it was almost too much to hold. It had worn us out, you could say. Which we experience this level of that, that hangover that comes where you're just kind of like energyless, um, find yourself in a whole new, the world has not shifted and changed, but it has shifted and changed. And there's just this difference in feeling around you, between you. 
and you don't really know what to say in those moments. You don't know really what to feel. You don't know exactly how to act, how to be in those moments. These moments happen in deep love, like that moment that I'm sharing there with you that happened for me in Mexico. We had other moments like that, you know, but where we, it was just this whole awakening. But they also happen at points of breakup when we, when we separate from from a partner, from a loved one, and we have these deep, because what were we doing there? We're sharing deep vulnerability around our pain. We're sharing, we're, we're having to get real and vulnerable with the loss of someone or something, you know, and, and there's a lot of desire to blame, a lot of desire to point fingers, to, to blame ourselves for what has happened, or to point fingers out and blame the other person for what has happened. That's all dangerous, dangerous ground. But in our in our pain, we tend to do that. That's a very vulnerable state. There's this feeling of that lull comes in again where your whole world has shifted, but nothing at the world just keeps going, right? No matter what, no matter what we lose, no matter what happens, life just keeps rolling on. Life just keeps happening. And when we're in that state of vulnerability, we tap into this beautiful emotion, this beautiful place of feeling. Yesterday I was talking about how important it is to feel, to really tap in and to feel, you allow yourself to get into the feels, no matter what the feels are. And this is again, the lesson, vulnerability hangover is all about getting into the feels and allowing yourself to be vulnerable. And that word of vulnerability is a scary, scary word, is it not? I know that when I, when I speak it, when I feel it, when I say it, when I tell somebody, well, you need to, you know, just learn how to surrender, learn how to get vulnerable. People normally look at me like, oh no, I'm running right out of your office right now. This was a bad idea. I don't want to do coaching. I don't want to talk to you about this stuff. You just use the V word and the S word, vulnerability, surrender. Oh my goodness. No, I'm gone. I'm gone. But in that same statement, they go, I want deeper intimacy. I want deeper connection. I want to feel loved. I want somebody to feel me, to show up for me, to be there for me. I want to be there for somebody else. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want all of this. But I don't want the vulnerability piece and I don't want the surrender piece. I don't want to do the feels thing because the feels, the feels, that's, that's weakness, right? That's where we get weak. That's where we, that's where we lose our power. That's where we don't, you know, like, like that's just, that can't be good. It can't be good to get into the feels. But what are we wanting? We're wanting the feels. We're wanting the feels. We, what is intimacy? It's a feeling. It's a feeling first. It's feeling brought on because we are wanting to go and experience the realms of a relationship. We're wanting to experience ourselves at a deeper level. We're wanting to, somebody else to experience us at a level that we don't always just let out to just anybody. We want to feel like we are being completely accepted for who we are as human as we are. And we're wanting, hopefully we're wanting and understanding that in order for that to happen, that we must be willing to experience the other person at that level as well for all the humanness that they have. But the stuff that we love, the stuff that we're like meh about, and the stuff that we're like ugh about, right? We've got to be willing to experience that. But in order for us to have that level of intimacy, which is based on truth, we must be willing to get into the feels. And the feels is all about vulnerability and surrender. We must be able to surrender to our emotion, what is rising up in us. And no matter how we perceive it, good, bad, indifferent, other, it's still okay. It's still perfect for that moment. That vulnerability hangover, though, it kind of leaves us with 
a hangover, right? It's like we drank too much. We wake up the next day and we're just kind of like in this fog and our equilibrium's off. And, uh, and you know, if you're, if you're metaphysical energetics at all, then you're like, whoa, my vibration's weird. And like, I feel these tingles and blah, 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 all this stuff. No matter what it is, your physical body is feeling the emotional toll that it has taken on. That's why we experience it in high emotional places and low emotional places. Somebody, we've been dating somebody for a long time. They ask us to marry them. We've been wanting to get married. It's like that next level of commitment. And we go through the proposal and, and we have emotional hang up. And we have that vulnerability hang up, hangover that comes the next day from that. We might get, suffer from buyer's remorse. We might suffer from all these different things. That's all that vulnerability hangover kicking in of like high, high emotion, high, high connection, high level of being seen and of witnessing. And then we go, Whoa. and it's that grounding space. It's that space where we tap back in, where we come back into our bodies and we're different. We're different in this space and we get to choose what path we take from there because those are doorways those vulnerability hang up hangover i keep saying hang up hangover um spaces really they the problem is is that they can get into a hang up area that's probably why i'm because i'm going i need to talk about hang up too but we get into that hangover spot and it really is like we're just like we get to pivot from that point and here's where the hang up comes in how do we pivot from this new embodiment of self, from this movement, from this, this space that has, we've now come into. How do we pivot? Which direction do we choose to go? Remember I talked about blame, right? Like in, in like the level of breakup, we, or, or even death, because breakup is just another form of death. It's a death of a relationship, right? So anytime we have that kind of transition in relationship in general, what we end up doing is we want to get mad. We want to be pissed off. And Lord, it wasn't our fault, or maybe it was our fault, depending on how we tend to, how our ego likes to play it. It could be, well, if I had done blah, 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 or, oh my goodness, so-and-so did this, 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 this. How dare they abandon me? How dare they leave me? How dare they, how dare they, how dare they? Finger pointing one way or another, right? And then we also sit and we, we reminisce and we get caught up in the feeling of was, what was and the missing of it. And we get caught in the void, right? We get caught in the void of not having it anymore. The fear of not having it anymore. The fear of like, will I ever be kissed like that? Held like that? Have those kind of conversations again? Have that kind of bond, that friendship? That level of intimacy. What are we going for? We're going for the vulnerability. Will I ever be able to be able to be vulnerable to surrender like that again? And that holds us. That fear holds us. And here's the thing. Anytime we have vulnerability hangover, we've typically expressed a lot. We've had a ton of emotion. And from that point, then we have this space where we go into fear mode into, oh my goodness, did I show too much? Did I reveal too many cards on the table at this point? Is it going to cause this? Or maybe my reveal is what caused this. And we want to hold on, get hung up right there, get hung up on the fear of not having, get hung up on the blame of what happened, get hung up on, you know, all that negative charge stuff. And when we get into that negative frame of thinking, we hold ourselves in that lower vibration of relationship, in that lower frequency of ability to connect, of intimacy. And we end up kind of wanting to hide Hiding has nothing to do with intimacy. It's the reverse of intimacy. It is not healthy for the relationship. Like I keep saying, intimacy is about truth. Intimacy, without without trust, without truth, you have zero intimacy. Now, that can all waver in there as to the level that you're comfortable with and where you're at in your 
relationship growth and progression and who you're dealing with, of course, there's lots going on. But the generalized version of it is that intimacy is based on truth and truth has to come from the level of trust because if we cannot tell the truth, if we do not trust. So all starts with trust. The trust also is based in truth. They are kind of like the same street. There is no line between them. And intimacy comes from that. And vulnerability and surrender come from that. And at the same time are the same as intimacy. So as we move through, do we get hung up? In those spots, in those voids, in that fear, in that blame, in that, you know, constriction of self, in that constriction of feeling, this is too much, I'm too much, it feels too much, this is too much pain, this is too much joy, this is too much intimacy, this is too much vulnerability, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, hold, hold fear, grabbing you and holding you there. Or can you soften and breathe into it? Can you soften, breathe into it and allow yourself to go deeper? Because even in those spaces that you feel like there is absolutely no way that you can possibly go deeper, there's absolutely no way that you're ever going to be received at that level. I assure you that you can go deeper. You can be received deeper. And remember that it starts with you. It starts with you. All of it starts with you. Now, vulnerability, you have to be vulnerable with yourself. You have to be intimate with yourself. You have to be willing to tell yourself the truth. You have to be able to get real with yourself. You have to be able to let yourself feel life. You have to let yourself step into those grounds. And that is where it all starts to come about. It's like really, really just leaning into that feeling that feeling of vulnerability, that feeling of surrender and softening into it and having the faith that you can step forward and that you can feel more, expand more, hold more. Okay. When we choose to step into the feels of the holding more emotion, the experiencing more of life, that's where we tap into the living aspect, right? Because when we get stuck in those holdbacks over here and we hold all of that stuff in a negative fashion where we're stuck in the fear, we're stuck in that void of the not having the scarcity mindset of what will, this, this cannot possibly happen anymore. When we get stuck right there, what we end up doing when we're like, oh no, I can't, I can't let go of it. I can't, I have to keep, you know, reminiscing about it. I have to keep doing this. What we do is we hold ourselves in that fear of not having. We hold ourselves in that lower vibration. When we move into the, I'm going to allow myself to feel the anger. I'm going to allow myself to feel the sadness. I'm going to allow myself to feel the joy. I'm going to allow myself to feel, to feel. I'm not going to pop the pill that makes it just bleh. No, I'm not going to douse myself in a bunch of, you know, alcohol that makes it blue, that keeps this, this level of I'm not feeling life anymore there. I'm not going to do that. No, instead, instead I'm going to breathe. Instead, I'm going to open myself. I'm going to open myself to everything that I am feeling. And I'm going to let myself go there. That right there, that moves us forward. That expands us into that new version of self, that stronger version of self. Okay? And that is where that, that hang, hangover of vulnerability can definitely expand you when you learn to soften into it, when you learn to not question it so much, when you learn to not fear it. Because even though it is waters that you have not treaded on before, it is still waters that you can handle. It is there for you to learn how to adapt, how to grow, and how to enter that flow of life that is accessible and brings you all the blessings that you want. Because that's what it's doing. I ask you today to, again, I think I might have asked this question yesterday. I have did not listen to yesterday's conscious coffee, but... I spoke it. I didn't listen to it. But I do, I ask you today to ask yourself, you know, where can, where can I be softer? It's like, there's your, here's your question to self. Where can I be softer in life and open and receive the feelings that come to me without question? Get real with yourself on that question and let yourself really step into it. Be honest. What would life be like if if you let yourself truly feel it, if you let yourself truly feel it, how much more stable could you feel? How much more love could you feel? How much more life giving would you be experiencing 
you know, on a day to day basis, how much more connection would you be having in your world? How much more would you feel like you were actually being seen, heard, felt? And how much more would you actually be able to feel, see, and hear the people in your life? If you were to just do that, if you were to just lean into that vulnerability without question. So if I've said anything in this conscious, in this conscious coffee, that's made you think of somebody that might need to hear it, please hit the share button. Even if I haven't said something that made you think of somebody, hit the share button, share your comments below, click on the like, the love. Let me know if you're catching it on the replay. Of course, love to hear from you guys on all of that stuff. Make sure that you let me know what your thoughts are on vulnerability. I want to hear what you guys have to say. I want the conversation to start because you know what? We are human beings and we are feeling based. And we have been so taught to not be feeling based. And because of it, we are a sick, sick society, world society that has been trained to not be human anymore. And that is exactly what we need to be focused on, is to become human. And human means to feel. Human means to emotionally connect and understand what all those levels of emotion are. And they are all positive. Even when they feel crappy, even when we're really mad, even when we're really sad, they're still perfect and they're still healthy and they're human emotions not to be run from, not to be hidden from, but to be felt. And if we were all to take it upon ourselves to find the responsibility to deal with our emotions in a mature fashion, which means to just ease into them, to allow ourselves to feel them instead of hiding from them, we would all be more equipped to actually deal with them. And we would not have the outbursts of rage and of trauma and of fear, of needs to take on power to damage others and self if we would just learn how to be respectable of our emotions, to honor them and to feel them. If you're interested in any one-on-one -on -one coaching, of course, click on the link in the comment section or go to www.kendallwilliams.com and click on the consult there. Feel free to, of course, email, message me, or leave uh, comments in the comment section on this topic or on anything that is near and dear to your heart and your soul and let me know how you feel about it. As always, everybody, stop existing, start living. I love you guys and remember to soften into your feelings today to allow yourself to take the day in, not just with your mind, but with your heart and your soul. You are worthy of living this fuck yes life. I love you guys. I'll catch you tomorrow with another conscious coffee.